Welcome back to Twin Cities Live. Well, Ben and Elizabeth are going to join us again in a few minutes. But with Halloween around the corner, it's time to talk about something that we always feel it like comes around this time of year, mm -hmm. prevalent in fall. It's people getting sick. Yes. Yeah, so Dr. Tim Hernandez with Entira Family Clinics joins us now with myths about autumn health concerns. And he is in his scrubs because, folks, he doesn't stop working. He delivered a baby this morning. Absolutely. Best deal around. Oh, this is so great. We're so glad to have yeah, you here. Thanks for making time. We, we talk often about, like, as it gets a little colder, mm -hmm. October, November, people start getting sick. We, we see some respiratory issues. Especially so, kids in school, too. Right, exactly. We've got some myths for you, hopefully, to debunk. Yes. We'll do right? our best. Okay, so I'm going to read All it right. verbatim, and then you let us know, okay? <laughs> so October is often when many respiratory infections cause more problems because, like ghouls of the Halloween, the germs rise from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's lots of myths out there, mm -hmm. but that one, I would have to say, is false. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You know, respiratory season comes seasonally for a variety of reasons, not the least of which kids are in school. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little colder. Um, so there's more people inside, more proximity, and most of these are caused by respiratory spread. Oh, my daughter was just on a an eighth grade trip, and guess what? She's got a <laughs> oh. massive cold oh, right now, and absolutely. so do all of her friends. They're all the together count. in close quarters. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Okay, absolutely. our next myth: most of these respiratory infections are caused by bobbing for apples or being bitten by <laughs> vampires. Who what? wrote this? <laughs> As we did, yeah. What are these called? What are these, what are these, what's the reason behind Yeah, these so most of course are viral. Mm -hmm. um, the germ theory uh, kind of came into play many, many, many years ago, centuries ago. And we know that the vast majority of respiratory infections are caused by viruses actually up to about 82%. So no, it's not bobbing for apples or vampires. <laughs> so when you say viruses, I mean, you're talking about like respiratory droplets. So sneezing, not covering your cough, all the things we were taught to do in first and second grade. Yes. Some people forget to do that still. Yes. You know, I think when COVID came, we really got a dose of how to do some of these local hygiene preventions. and. Uh, and now we like everything, we sort of slide back, mm -hmm. but washing your hands, covering your cough, mm -hmm. um, using Kleenexes, wearing a mask if you are sick are right. all things that are helpful. And so our next one is a little garlic or a silver cross <laughs> will keep these infections away. I do not think that's true. <laughs> no, no. So in addition to some of those kind of local hygiene things, of course, vaccination. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are getting a bit inundated because there's a new vaccine out for respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, um, that's kind of hit the market this fall. And, of course, we have uh, the vaccines for influenza and uh, for COVID or a newer version, a new booster for COVID that are available. Going off of that, what would you mm -hmm. say about folks wanting to potentially get the flu shot, but then maybe this other one yeah. for a strain of COVID? Like, is it possible to do too much? Um, you know, I think we don't know for sure, but I would say this. What we found out with COVID is we were very conservative. We used to say, if you're going to get a flu shot, wait a month or yeah. some period of time. And I think we found out it probably does not change the immune response if you have okay. them close together. In fact, a lot of people get two at the same time or even three. Um, and I suspect we'll see probably in upcoming years those combined. So you can get oh. one that'll cover all of them. Interesting. Okay, one and done. One All and right, done. here's our next myth, everyone. Antibiotics are the silver bullets to kill most respiratory infections. Do antibiotics kill everything, Dr. Hernandez? Very little, unfortunately. <laughs> Again, uh, most upper respiratory infections are caused by viruses. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've talked a little bit about you know, influenza and RSV, which are very prominent. COVID, of course, has been on the top of our minds now for years. But there are other uh, types of viral infections, enterovirus, rhinovirus, and then there's a new one out that I just learned about it, um, human pneumococcal... I even forgot. You're going to have to yeah, practice that. Yes, say that yes, fast. <laughs> yes. So, so is that a, a pneumonia-based virus? No, it's a, it's a respiratory. It's a lung-based okay. one. So it can cause both upper respiratory and lower respiratory infections. Okay. All right. I think okay. uh, there are people that just want an antibiotic. I think yeah. they think it's that magic pill. Yep. But oftentimes you just have to let it run its course, take your Tylenol, sleep. 
Absolutely. Chicken noodle soup. Yeah. Chicken noodle soup, <laughs> lots of liquids, cold air humidifier, maybe a little yeah. Vicks around mm -hmm, the neck, yeah. all those things that grandma mm -hmm. did. You know, I think those are all good things. Um, there are some antivirals though, and so if you do get tested and you do have a diagnosis, the key thing with viral infections is treating them really early. Mm -hmm. If they, if flu gets out three or four days, the Tamiflu that we use doesn't work. Ineffective. And infection. the Paxlovid for COVID has about a five day window. So you really, if you're going to be at risk, get tested early, get a diagnosis and get treatment if it makes okay. sense. Okay, myth number five, COVID is the only virus that should spook me. Yeah, and so we talked a little bit about some of those others, right? Enterovirus and rhinovirus. Um, you know, viruses are just, they're, they're replete, they're everywhere. And um, they're so difficult because the way they work with getting in our cells is just different than bacteria. And then they mutate, which is why we've seen so many variations of COVID-19 now in the short years that we've had it. So. Okay, we've got one more that I think we can get to. We've kind of touched on this, but we'll hit it home here. Mm -hmm. The vampires have it right. Sleep all day, go out all night <laughs> to avoid these infections. Should yeah. we do that? Should we party all <laughs> night? Well, go apparently <laughs> those in Wisconsin are doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think the best thing, again, are things that we've touched on, as you right. said. You know, mask if you're ill, mm -hmm. cover your cough, lots of good hand washing and early diagnosis to see if, in fact, you have something that you can treat and then get vaccinated. Right. Okay, doctor, thank you so much for being Absolutely. here. Appreciate it. For your wearing time. your scrubs today. <laughs> I had no I choice. I like it. <laughs> he had no choice. No choice. He just came right from the hospital. Okay, so if you want to learn more about Entira Family Clinics, call the number there on your screen or visit EntiraFamilyClinics.com.